This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Mnow Biscuits. New Island Governor said Julius Chen condemns criminal attack on Australian tourists. Foreign Affairs Minister says foreign policy white paper vital. Outbreak of fever kills five children in Oro province. A very good evening. You're watching National MTV News. I'm Godwin Eki. Thank you for joining us. New Island Governor Sir Julius Chen has come out to strongly condemn the criminal attack on a 21-year-old Australian female tourist recently. Sir Julius has called on the police force in the province to use extreme force when necessary to apprehend all those involved in what he described as a horrific act and bring them to full force of law and order. A very stern, said Julius, said all those involved must pay for the pain and loss they have caused, including severe punishment. He stressed that the New Island province must never normalize actions of criminals. Governor said Julius said his provincial government takes the safety and well-being of its citizens, visitors and business houses seriously. Sir Julius explained that New Island province and its people are peace-loving, hence if there is a threat from people of other provinces, a vagrancy act is already in place in the province and his government will not hesitate to impose it. Meanwhile, speaking via telephone from KVN this morning, an upset provincial police commander, Chief Inspector Felix Nebanat, also shared the same sentiments as that of Governor Sir Julius Chen. This is the first time we have an incident in the province of the province. So, I miss about him to the Governor of the Bible, Honorable Sir Julius Chen, long strongly condemning this one This incident that came up over the weekend last week. All right? So we have swiftly moved in, long attending the situation. Namibla started the only possible man, please. Now only service at all cells, Lunibla. Now investigation, she may start long on them, long continue, long going inside those long on them. So we are going to back around. I hear that some man, we may play several old sample land where, you know, uh, uh, they are attached to people we know, and we are not going to, you know, uh, bam it on them back off because we play several old sample land, now land will make it trouble. We make it trouble, we make it trouble. So we will have to leave you. So police is, uh, is, is going to that. We will start making more police investigations and we already off the ground. Chief Inspector Nebanat added that one policeman looks after almost 3,000 people in the province. Hence, police cannot fully cover the whole of the island province. PPC Nebanat explained that he has come up with a strategy called Smart Cop Smart Policing in the province to work alongside the local chiefs in the communities to help curb law and order issues. It is understood three suspects in their 20s were arrested and are now in police custody, while six who are known to police are still at large. Swift investigations by CID officers in the province have commenced and more arrests are expected soon. Linde Suharupa, National MTV News. A total of 25 street vendors have been arrested and charged for illegally selling in public places that are not designated market spaces. They have been detained at the Barocco cell awaiting court appearances, officer in charge of Barocco's support unit senior constable Petrus Mann said the lawbreakers who were arrested and charged were illegally selling at the Tabari bus stop near shops and banks in a commercial space which is not a designated market area. In line with Police Commissioner David Manning's declaration of 2023 being the year of law and order, NCD Metropolitan Superintendent Silva Sika said his men have conducted awareness throughout the city of illegal street sales in undesignated areas such as bus stops, footpaths, shop fronts and traffic lights. According to the city's police boss, police will continue to apprehend people who defy the orders. Matsub Sika said he was placed with police officers from the Barocco police station and called on other stations to follow suit. 
Ahmed Subsika explained that when these offenders are cautioned and released, they will go back and continue doing what they do. Hence, this is a wake-up call to all street vendors to vend their staff at the proper market areas. Ahmed Subsika also called on the general public to stop from buying from these illegal vendors selling at undesignated marketplaces. Similarly, NCD Central Commander Anthony Wagambi Jr. called on the general public, including street vendors, to respect the work of the police and to adhere to instructions. Wagambi Jr. further added that the whole purpose of this is to minimize crime and to keep the country's national capital city clean. Meanwhile, the 25 alleged offenders who were arrested were charged under Summary Offenses Act, Section 44B, for illegal street sale and under NCDC Litter Act, Section 11. These offenders can be bailed out on 300 kina or remain in custody until their court hearing. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. With the funding support of 3 million kina for Mukurumanda Correctional Service Facility in Enga Province, Prime Minister James Marape has called for citizens to be law-abiding. Prime Minister Marape made this call at Wapanamanda on Friday during his visit to launch their five-year development plan. With the national government presenting a total of 28 million kina for various projects in the Enga Province, Prime Minister James Marape said under law and order, correctional services must also be on ground. The Prime Minister also urged people to get into agriculture, especially vegetable farming. He said a cold storage facility will be built at Wapenamanda for fresh produce set for sales outside the province. Now, airport up, side here, we're putting up the house, we're making freezer. Lord, I can't get people to get go inside. And the governor requested me, but this was a long time yet. Time airport complete, side house, you making freezer. You can put in cabbage, broccoli, carrot, or something to go inside. Ready, let me sell him to come to market outside. I can't kind of remember. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. The Office of the Solicitor General has urged police to work in collaboration with their office to provide relevant information and instructions so that the state lawyers can handle cases against the state in court. The Solicitor General Tauvasa Tanuvasa explained on a recent one-day client outreach program to the provincial police commanders of the state. 2023 Client Outreach Program is facilitated yearly by the Office of the Solicitor General to strengthen state client relations and educate clients about the roles of the Office of the Solicitor General in terms of court representations. With these client outreach programs, legal knowledge and court representation is passed down to the clients, the public servants. They are responsible to impart knowledge to them on how to work in collaboration to file and serve court documents. They aim to also empower their clients to have fear in attending court and avoid the issue. In a one-day client program for the provincial police commanders, Solicitor General Talvasa Tanuvasa is urging the police department to make it a priority to provide instructions to them so that they can defend the claims raised against the state. He told the men in blue that utmost cooperation is vital. The state does exactly what it has to do for the people by the people and we in terms of the court cases that we deal with we want to make sure that uh, we shift out the, the genuine from the from the fraudulent and from the disingenuous ones Tanuvasa said they will be having another client outreach program on the first week of March in Imbongu district in the Southern Highlands province we are planning to to do a client outreach up in the Highlands uh, specifically in Imbongu district, um, uh, in Southern Highlands province. Uh, they have the facilities there. With a lot of plans pinned on their calendar, the state lawyer said much help will be needed and they are looking forward in having new lawyers joining their team. These are from the Legal Training Institute and other practicing lawyers as well. Grace Papiali, National MTV News. 
Foreign Affairs Minister Justin Tachenko has announced the Foreign Policy White Paper Eminent Persons Group, who will be taking on the task to conduct an independent audit review and provide the government a complete policy in the next 12 policy in the next 12 months. This announcement was made recently at the Foreign Affairs Department in Port Moresby. This eminent persons group who will be conducting the audit and reviewing of the policy include Sir Charles Lepani as the chairman, Dame Meg Taylor, Ms. Winnie Kiap, Dame Jane Kakedo, Mr. Gabriel Pepson and Mr. Gabriel Dusava. Minister Tachenko said he is proud to have chosen some senior Papua New Guineans to be part of this very important policy review. White, uh, this foreign policy white paper will be done completely independent. It will serve as the way of doing things into the future where we will do it ourselves. Minister Tachenko revealed that the policy has not been looked at for many years, highlighting that once it's reviewed, it will serve as a guide to doing things into the future. He said the policy will be completed this year and will be presented to the government for implementation for the benefit of PNG and he went on to stress on the importance of having this policy. Look at the past and look at the present of our security issues, our regional issues, um, our, when it comes to our embassies, when it comes to what is the priorities. What is the theme? Sir Charles Lepani, who is the chairman, acknowledged the department for having confidence in appointing them to carry out this important task. Thank you, Minister, and your government. On behalf of my colleagues and I, and uh, to, to the Secretary too of the Department of Foreign Affairs, and to all your senior staff, uh, for the confidence that you have uh, in, um, in inviting us to be to take on this. Uh, enormous task of reviewing the past reviews and trying to put together something that is a uh, uh, way forward for our foreign policy. Meanwhile, Minister Tachenko acknowledges them for putting their hands up to support the government to move forward. He added that the policy will give the government a clear template to the foreign policy moving forward. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Five children aged between five to six years old have died days apart from what is believed to be an outbreak of fever in the remote Kira local level government in Northern Province. The deceased children, including an elderly man, passed on since last Friday. The only aid post in Kira LLG has closed down due to the funding constraints and non-availability of medical workers there. A concerned local told MTV News via telephone today that the fever symptoms started late last year. However, after a recent religious mass gathering, which saw people attend from nearby areas, including parts of Wau Waria in the Morobe province, the fever started spreading. The symptoms of this fever affecting the children there are dry cough, causing headache and eventually vomiting and red sore eyes. This has caused rapid weight loss in the children, causing some of them to succumb to their deaths. Now, the pleasure and triple and start of critical condition. That was station and no one to help with over a health worker and more we go to Poponeta. No one to public children to start with Mr. Sumugao said it is at its worst stage now. The first child succumbed to this fever last Friday and another child aged five died the next day. On Monday, the 15th of January, another child aged six died due to these fever symptoms. Another two children have died on Tuesday and Wednesday respectively, causing panic among the villagers at the remote government station. According to Mr. Sumugao, government services are little to none from wards 1 to 4 in Kira LLG, which is in the Sohe electorate in Northern Province. The only aid post was closed in 2017. Locals who wish to receive medical attention walk for days to reach the nearest aid post in Garaina in the Morobe province. 
Mr. Sumugao clarified that there is no road link and the only access to Kira is by air. He said he has already provided a code for airlift of affected people to the local Sohe MP and is waiting for his response. A worried Mr. Sumugao is calling for urgent medical assistance by this weekend or more lives will be lost as the fever is rapidly spreading throughout wards 1, 2, 3 and 4 of Kira LLG and to nearby Waria Garaina Valley situated in neighboring Morobe province. It is understood community health workers based at Popondeta General Hospital are waiting for funds to be released so medical supplies can be airlifted to Kira. Attempts to get comments from the Northern Provincial Health Authority and Sohe member were unsuccessful today. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Na National MTV News. Just before the week ended, Grand Chief Seb Obdadai was elected for a second term as Vice Regal on the floor of the National Parliament. It was three-way contest between incumbent Grand Chief Seb Obdadai, lawyer Stephen Pokawin and former diplomat Winnie Kiep. Tonight we take a closer look at the events leading up to the re-election of Governor-General Seb Obdadai, what he hopes to achieve in his second tenure, and the overwhelming support for Ms. Kip, the woman who dared to be brave. Only three names of prominent Papua New Guineans were endorsed with the Clerk of Parliament, Carla Alpha, to contest the Vice Regal post. The trio, incumbent Governor General, Grand Chief Sir Bob Darai, endorsed by the Pangu Party, lawyer Stephen Pokowin, endorsed by National Alliance Party, and former diplomat Winnie Kiap, endorsed by the Central Governor, Rufina Pita. The credentials of the three are as follows Sir Bob Darai, 61, from Dawat Village, Samungan, Warren. Province was sworn in as the 10th Governor General on February 28, 2017, and was commissioned by Queen Elizabeth II on June 30, 2017. Said that I worked hard from an early age where he graduated with a Master's of Business Administration at the Griffith University, Brisbane, Australia, in 1995, and served as Kabum MP from 2002 to 2016 before taking up his current post a year later. The second contestant vying for the GG post was Stephen Pokowin from Manus, a foundation member of the National Alliance Party and his senior lecturer of law at the University of Papua New Guinea. Pokowin was also the former governor of Manus. The third and first ever woman to vie for the Governor General post was Miss Winnie Kiap from Baluan Island in the Manus province. Kiap is a University of Queensland graduate. She served as Cabinet Secretary before being posted as High Commissioner to the United Kingdom from 2011 to 2022. As the week drew to an end, support for the only woman candidate gained momentum. The NCD Women's Council taking the lead to voice the support for Miss Winnie Kiap for the post of Vice Regal. Long-time women's advocate Barbara Toya said after 47 years, it is time for a female to take the largely ceremonial post of Governor-General. We trust that she would be a good candidate for the Governor-General's post. And with that, she will hold the confidence for women to be given such high positions in this country. And it is also during this term of parliament that we will be celebrating our 50 years of independence. The women have collectively stated that they have secured 20 seats in the public gallery to show their support and presence whilst observing the secret ballot come Thursday. They are appealing to the members of parliament to seriously consider Ms. Kia when casting their votes. On behalf of the National Council of Women, which comprises of the 22 provinces in this country, I appeal to the members of the parliament and those that are responsible to give, a, give the women this mandate because it is, it is time. 
On Thursday, the 19th of January, the public gallery began filling up as the nation watched with earnest the sitting of Parliament. The first order of business was to see if incumbent Governor General Grand Chief Sir Bob Duddy had the numbers to take part in the secret ballot. Over 90 members stood up showing the support for the incumbent Sir Bob Duddy to take part in the race for the Governor General post. The Parliament clerk and the attendants collected the votes in the secret ballot and tallied the votes and passed it on to Speaker of the National Parliament Job Pomet to deliver the results which saw the elimination of lawyer Stephen Pockowin. Bob Duddy, 69. Mr. Stephen Pokawin, 3, and Ms. Winnie Kiap, 31. Honourable members, the candidate with the least number of votes, Mr. Stephen Pokawin, will be excluded from further ballot, and a second ballot shall be held immediately. Following the elimination of Pokawin, the second secret ballot was held, which saw Sir Bob Duddy retain his seat with 71 votes, to 33, finishing ahead of Miss Winnie Kiap. Deputy Opposition Leader was first to convey his congratulations and he had this message for the Grand Chief Sir Bob Duddy. That you sit down inside of this powerful office, it is your responsibility, Governor General, to remain impartial and be a protector and a guardian of the constitution of Papua New Guinea. Yeah. Your election is an election of confidence in this high office. Serve the interest of this great nation, Prime Governor General. Mr. Speaker, let me emphasize that the buck stops with you, Governor General. The Prime Minister also offered up his congratulations. James Marape said the ruling Pangu Party and other members of the coalition government supported the re-election of Sir Bob Duddy as Governor General in Parliament to maintain continuity and stability. Also into this vacancy that was looming or the another opportunity to vote that was looming in our term of Parliament. And right from the start, uh, we had no reason to doubt Sebob's uh, impartial standing, Sebob's performance as uh, Governor General, and long before Ms. Kiap expressed her intention to run, or long before Mr. Pokawin expressed uh, his interest to put a hand up, uh, already government had take, taken resolution for continuity and stability. Prime Minister Marape then thanked Ms. Kiap and Mr. Pokowin for their candidacy for Governor General. As well as uh, Big Barry, Winnie Kiap, Antem Vikman, Stephen Pokowin. Uh, the two candidates that uh, came third and second, uh, equally women and men of uh, good standing in our society. Mr. Speaker, may me like to talk thank you law for expressing interest. Following the proceedings in Parliament, Ms. Winnie Kiap offered a congratulations to Sir Bob Duddy. Ms. Kiap also spoke of the process of election. Says is that it's a democratic process, and it's a process that should have a moral basis as well, because whatever is democratic is always based, always has moral basis. So the process was good. Um, for me, I, I want to thank those who had helped me, Sir Pukatemu, member for Abao, who sponsored my candidacy, um, Central Governor Rufina Peter, who did a lot of legwork. Ms. Kiap also hopes that her actions can inspire younger women to dare to dream. I stood as, as a, a person, a Papua New Guinean. Not as a woman necessarily, not from New Guinea Islands, just just a person who thought that I was, you know, fit for the purpose, I could do the job. Um, but there was a lot of that support there from women's groups. And um, I just hope that my having gone that far, because no women candidate has gone that far in the process before, I hope that young women of Papua New Guinea can take courage in that and know that it is possible. The historic win for a second term left Governor General Grand Chief Sir Bob Duddy overwhelmed with gratitude. As a Christian, 
I want to acknowledge God for uh, for the decision that was made by our leaders, members of parliament. Secondly, I want to say thank you to Marape Rosso government. Um, they have seen it. Uh, they, they, they saw that uh, saw the confidence uh, of the work that I do here at the government house. The Vice Regal paid the ultimate tribute to former UK Ambassador Winnie Kiap and lawyer Stephen Pokowin. Express my appreciation uh, to my uh, uh, two good friends who, who provide that challenge. They are very qualified uh, professionals, uh, leaders in their own rights. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Marape will inform Buckingham Palace that Sir Bob Dudai has been re-elected as Vice Regal. Following this, Sir Bob Dudai will be called to England, where he will officially be sworn in by King Charles III. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. The Highlands Highway bus stop near Pope's Oval in Mount Hagen City is being monitored by police and bus stop wardens. This has now seen the bus stop becoming safer for the general public, especially women and the elderly. Defense donated by the city missing for the Christmas and New Year operations recently are now being used by Mount Hagen Police to mend the bus stop daily. This area was once known as the notorious animal market under previous regimes and had been a hub for criminal activities. However, under the current government, the country's third largest city and the capital of Western Highlands province is seeing changes as this place is now being monitored. Passengers are now peacefully moving around the bus stop and getting on buses without any risk. It is understood that police are working with youths engaged as bus stop wardens. Meanwhile, the general public, including bus crews, are pleased with Mount Hagen police and commend the work done thus far. Estagane, National MTV News. After over 20 years, a pioneer women's foundation finally comes to light about the humanitarian work they do. The establishment is located at Nine Mile in Port Moresby. This women's group has registered over a thousand women within the nation's capital, all from the four regions of Papua New Guinea. Rose Kiripo, a single mother of five and president of Pioneer Women's Foundation, established this care center for disadvantaged and displaced women and girls throughout Port Moresby. Being a single mother for nine years, Rose understands the struggles women face daily. Me plus I start marketing 22 ice block. Now 22 ice block come now and me start me plus buy one plus machine now. Me plus sum up him me sum up him five kina colors. Okay, five kina colors he can now. Me plus buy one plus little car blow me plus. Okay, me plus buy him little car blow me plus now and me plus start marketing go me plus buy him nar black car. Okay, me plus start market go go now and me plus tin tin lock kirabi maso seis and blow me plus. Now me plus kirabi maso seis and blow me plus and me plus look out him all merry we problem mama all single widow. Me plus look out him is a look out him all. Women there specialize in sewing, knitting, bilum weaving, and putting flowers. The next skills they will learn are basic reading and writing. Maria Talalao, former primary school teacher and creator of Smart Coaching Program, shared her excitement on supporting these women's upskilling. Meanwhile, Magdalene Goro, member of the Women's Association, says this foundation has been a refuge for many women and girls in the city. This association was so helpful to the mothers who were blessed by uh, some uh, people out there for 
calling them names like sorcery and uh, husband beating their wives, they came here and find refuge here. Despite the group comprising of mostly women, a handful of men support and look out for these women. I work to help all the legally all the coffee packets. I roast and I sell it all all by helping all the people too. Hard work, sacrifice, and dedication has seen these women reach greater heights. Out of the thousand plus women, 25 will travel to Sydney early December to attend the Sydney Craft Market. Amanda Elaitia, National MTV News. An inland fish farm in Southern Highlands Province is steadily getting recognition from the government. Officials from the National Fisheries Authority visited Anjo Trinity Fish Farm at Konapul Village in Imbongu, Southern Highlands Province on Friday last week. The audit and certification team from NFA were on ground to collect samples of the water source as well as the soil where the fish farm is situated. According to fish farmer James Anjo, the team also collected samples of fish bread in his ponds. And they took it down and they're gonna study, investigate when whatever they were looking for. When they are satisfied, they'll come back to me and let me know. And uh, whether it's good for my product to be exported overseas or we got to do some more improvement. That's why these people are here. Meanwhile, according to NFA officers, the collection of the soil, water and fish samples will be used to test whether the environment is safe and healthy to produce certified fish for export. For now, Anjo and his team have their fingers crossed as they await the results. Estagane, National MTV News. BSP's Deputy General Manager for Retail Sales and Customer Service Delivery, Peter Komong, has announced that they understand that a lot of customers cannot make it to BSP branches during the weekdays to pay for school and tertiary institutions related fees. Therefore, BSP, as in past years, has allowed for selected BSP branches to be open on Saturdays for back to school needs, which commenced yesterday, 28. Selected branches around the country will be open, will open their doors for the next five Saturdays, which commenced on the 21st of January and will run till the 18th of February 2023 from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. These branches are Boka, Arawa, Kokopo, Palmalmal, Wiwek, Maprik, Yanguru, Goroka, Wabek, Tari, Bans, Medeng, Gusab, Alatau, Leitop Town, Bulolo, Kevieng, Lihir, Wagini Banking Center, Popondeta, Kundiawa, Mendi, Kimbe, Aitape, Vanimo, Kionga, Tabubil, and Mount Hagen. Mr. Common said the annual Saturday banking is an extended service BSP is providing to cater for back-to-school related banking needs. BSP's personal lending product remains the most competitive in the market and offers customers same-day funding subject to all requirements being met. Mr. Common added that while a Saturday banking is available for school and tertiary related fee deposits, School fee payment service is also available through BSP Mobile Banking USSD service and on BSP Pay. He is encouraging customers to register and use BSP Mobile Banking to pay school fees directly to the schools from the comfort of their home or office. Alternatively, customers can use BSP Internet Banking to pay fees directly to these schools as well as BSP Pay for a select number of schools. The full list of registered schools is available on the BSP website www.bsp.com.pg. In addition, the trading hours for the new NCD Lending Center will extend to Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m to improve convenience for the customers in NCD. Customers seeking financial assistance for back-to-school needs can visit the lending center on Saturdays. 
Esther Gane, National MTV News. The Chinese New Year is the most solemn festival of the New Year for every Chinese and is celebrated in China for thousands of years with various forms of activities. The Chinese community of PNG also get to celebrate in the country. Gazelle International Hotel celebrated the event with rich, colorful activities and the famous Chinese dragon dance in Kokopo last night. Despite being far from China, the Chinese community in Kokopo lit up the Gazelle International Hotel last night with rich and colorful activities. The highlight of the Chinese New Year's Eve celebration was the Dragon Dance, which is believed to bring good luck to the people and that the longer it dances, the more luck it will bring to the community. Gazelle International Hotel was packed to capacity with the cheerful Chinese families and friends all gathered together for the banquet. The owner of Tropicana Limited, Sandra Lau, shared the tales of the Chinese culture and said 2023 is the year of the rabbit. This is traditionally believed that the rabbit is the symbol of hope and peace, possibly signaling a calmer year ahead. As a businesswoman, Lau gave her views on the current situation they are facing in Kokopo with high inflation, consistent blackouts, law and order issues and low investor confidence having affected their business operations daily. Grace Papiali, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. Trukai Sports is next. Stay with us. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Tukai Sports. During the parliament session held last week, Minister for Sports and DHS Don Pollier gave a detailed rundown of the 2020 to 2050 sports policy that has been put in place by the government, to which he will embark on as the minister responsible. While presenting the sports policy, Minister for Sports and Dehest Don Pole highlighted that one of the fundamental duties that he will be executing in the sports policy is to position or restore sports as a mandatory activity in schools through the school curriculum. Positioning for restoring sports as a mandatory activity in schools through school curriculum. I'd like to thank the Prime Minister and the Cabinet and Minister Education for making a decision to factor sports in the school curriculum, and I'm very thankful. Physical activity is vital to the holistic development of young people, fostering their physical, social, and emotional health. The benefits of sports reach beyond the impact on physical well-being, and the value of the educational benefits of a sport should not be underestimated. Minister Pole further added that through this activity, the positive outcome would be evident in the health and fitness levels of students as young as six years old right up to the tertiary level. There has been a rise in lifestyle diseases and incorporating sports as a way of life at the earlier part of a citizen's life is one of the major areas of concerns that he is aiming to accomplish. Meanwhile, this national sports policy is in line with a PNG Vision 2050 roadmap aimed at going rural to go global. The vision is to leave no child behind as enshrined in the Maraparoso government to not only take back PNG and make it the richest black nation. Henceforth, the policy stands as the foundation of sport development in the country in going rural to go global in a new era of sports delivery. Lisa Puni. Chukai Sports. Following the two semi finals competed yesterday for the Men's National Soccer League tournament, the competition will host its two grand finalists, the Hekari United FC and the Lay City FC, here in the nation's capital. 
Under the leadership of the Hackery United FC's first-time coach, David Muto, the football club has made it into the grand final challenge where they will face off against the Lay City FC in two weeks' time. Coach Muto, while speaking to the media yesterday following their win, explained that the win is a collaborative accomplishment for the Hackery Club. Um, to my boys, I don't have any comment. I think I give all the credit back to our management, especially Mamboni and our, our sponsor MRDC, and credit back to all our players for their hard work and effort throughout the week. I think everything go back to them. They get all the credit, not anyone, They're just the players. As the Lay City side are the defending champions, coach Muto further added that his side will work immensely hard in their two weeks preparations ahead of the grand final match. We have to keep on going with our training, hard training, keep on working hard because Lay City, you know, they are the defending champions. We have to be prepared to face them because it's not an easy game for us. So I think um, the boys has managed to overcome this. We always say this is the grand final and it's over. Now we are facing Lay City. Um, we, we have to keep on working hard and ready for the next uh, the grand final. The grand final clash will eventuate on Saturday the 4th of February 2023. The clash is set to be staged at the PNG Football Stadium, Port Mosby. Lisa Puni, Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. True Kai Sports. You're watching True Kai Sports. The NCD Governor's Cup commenced today with its washout games, where the games took place at the Mosby South Black Stadium. NCD Governor's Cup resumed today here at the Mosby South Stadium with its washout games after not playing for two weeks due to wet weather and venue issues. Today's washout matches kicked off with Riders Namona taking on the Capital Macaus in an intense battle where both teams showed both their prowess in the hope of winning the first match. The first half was in favor of the Macaus, who dominated in the first half. In the second half, Riders Namona came from behind to score their first 10, but wasn't enough to catch up with the Macaus. With a dispute in the field towards the final three minutes of the match, the game was stopped due to a try that was unofficial. An extra three minutes was given where Riders Namona took advantage of to score in the first minute of the three minutes that was given to seal the deal at full time. Now with the washout matches now completed, the top three teams will proceed on into the semi-finals next weekend, followed by the grand final match between the top two teams. Lisa Puni, Chukai Sports. To overseas sports now, Melbourne United has ended the 36's hopes of making the National Basketball League final with a seven-point win. Blade Entertainment Centre. Chris Golding made five three-pointers on his way to a game-high 28 points as United won 94-87. United's fifth victory in a row keeps their season alive. In last night's other match, the Brisbane Bullets defeated the Illawarra Hawks 103-86 in their bottom-of-the-table clash in Wollongong. The Southside Flyers are second in the Women's National Basketball League after a 16-point win over the bottom-placed Capitals in Canberra. Maddie Rocci and Kayla Thornton scored 22 points each as the Flyers won 97-81. Sydney Flames coach Shane Hill and his daughter Shyla Hill were again absent for the Flames lineup with the Perth Lynx. Perth winning 87-68 to make it five straight victories and remain in the playoff hunt. That ends Trukai Sports. The weather report is next. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. Weather forecast for the next 24 hours. Southern region, Port Mosby, cloudy periods with possible brief showers. 
Daru and Kerema possible brief showers. Alatau cloudy periods with few showers. Popondeta cloudy periods with rain at times. In the Mamase region, Lay City, cloudy with few showers and possible thunderstorm. Medeng, Wiwek and Vanimo, cloudy periods with few showers. In the New Guinea Islands region, Loringau, partly cloudy with possible brief showers. KVN, Kokopo and Rabao, cloudy periods with few showers. In the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, cloudy with rain periods, then morning fog. Goroka and Kundiyawa, cloudy periods with patchy rain, then morning fog. Mendi and Wabe, cloudy with rain periods, then morning fog. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Sunday, the 22nd of January 2023. From the entire news team, pleasant viewing. Bye for now. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.